After having taken Spark's physical controller into our hands, let's see now some functions that are a little more advanced found on the controller. In what follows, we'll study particularly the pad FX and its three big associated options. We'll also see how to use the loop function. A little later in the training, we'll look more into detail at the automations and we'll begin to understand how the associated software enables to dive even more into the heart of this rhythmic and creative journey. Spark's pad effects here enables to generate various effects directly by sliding our finger on the pad. This pad controls several classified effects here in three categories named filter, slicer and roller. Let's see the first of these categories. The filter category enables to generate three types of filters. The first being labeled LPF, that is low pass filter. It has the characteristic of cutting the frequencies located further than the cutoff frequency. This cutoff frequency is controlled by the finger's position on the pad. The more on the left is the finger, the more the cutoff frequency is low, and inversely. The horizontal axis controls the cutoff frequency, and the vertical axis controls the resonance. This enables a quick control of these two elements of synthesis with only one finger. Let's take the time to listen to this filter on a rhythmic loop now. If we want a more whistling filtering movement on our pattern, you need to hold the fingers at the top of the pad. And inversely, if we wish to have a filtering with less character, you need to leave your finger at the bottom of the pad. By clicking again on the filter button, we change the low pass filter in a band pass filter, represented here by the letters B, P, F. Here, the frequencies located around the cutoff frequency are let pass, and the peripheral frequencies in the lows and the highs are filtered. Finally, the last available filter here is the HPF, that is high pass filter. It's simply the opposite of the low pass filter. This filter is very practical to give the impression that the low frequencies floor gets progressively lost, used very much in the breaks just before the rhythms coming back with all the low frequencies. Let's change kits to continue. By activating the slicer function, we can control no less than 7 effects. The first one, named repeat, enables to repeat the pattern's fragments on the fly to create characteristic rhythmic repetitions. These repetitions nature is shown on the backlit display and to know in advance on which part of the pad you must press to get such rhythm repetitions, you need to rely on the software screen of the pad effects. We got synchronized repetitions at the quarter note. At the dotted eighth note. At the 8th note At the 16th note 32nd note And 64th note With a little practice, it can be interesting to activate momentarily the repetitions in 32nd and 64th note like this. Let's change the pattern to vary the listening. 
By pushing again the slicer button, we activate the tape mode. This simulates a magnetic band effect which speed slows down, thus consequently lowering progressively the sound's pitch. The speed of this slowing down borrows the same rhythmic ratio logic evoked earlier. The reverse mode takes back the repeat mode logic, but this time the audio is read inversely in real time. The strobe effect repeats the signal, but this time by acting as a gate. This provides cuts in the audio. The pan effect repeats the signal by making it pass on the left and on the right, alternatively in the stereo panorama. Repeat mix does like the normal repeat mode, but as opposed to the latter, in addition to repeating the signal in small fragments, it lets the normal pattern sounds pass also. Finally, the bit crusher effect enable to degrade voluntarily the audio signal by reducing its bit depth. The smaller this depth is, the more the signal is degraded, which enables us to get a distortion sound often very interesting. Let's change kits. The roller mode doesn't affect directly the programmed percussions on the patterns, but on the percussions played by the pads, so we're not obliged to start the sequencer. You need to press on the pad to keep it pressed and to choose among the repetitions rhythmic factors here. Notice that since the Sparks instrument pads send aftertouch messages, the pressure put with the fingers on the pads enable to increase or decrease the roll's volume. We can, of course, use the roller effect over an existing pattern. Let's change kits. Notice that in the software view, the tree effect options filter slicer roller can be used in latch mode by a right mouse click. On the physical controller, we can also pass from the normal mode named touch to the latch mode by keeping the select button pushed and by pushing on one of the three buttons filter slicer and roller. To get back to the touch mode, you need to click on the buttons without the select button. In the latch mode, the effect will kept even if the finger isn't pressing on the pad effects anymore. With this mode, we can, for example, choose a bit crusher resolution and make filtering movements above. Or else, repeat effects in addition to filtering movements. The loop zone enables to create loops on the patterns. 
the divide knob manages the loop length according to various rhythmic ratios from the half note up to the smallest value. That is the sequences step for that matter here with this project that is the 1 16th note. The move knob enables to define the limits left and right of the loop inside the pattern. Let's do an example now. Let's listen first to this initial pattern. Let's place divide on the half factor, a length equivalent to the sequence's 8 steps. Now activate the loop. We notice that the loop is heard from steps 1 to 8 inclusively. Let's realize that on the software, with a right click, the move button shows two options which are shift by one step and shift by one loop size. Notice that you may pass from one mode to the other by pressing on the move button here. In the shift by one loop size mode, the loops move in the pattern will be made according to the loop's length set by the divide button. Since this button is for now on the half factor equivalent to 8 steps, therefore the only possibility for the moment consists in moving the loop playing the 1 to 8 steps on the 9 to 16 steps. Let's bring it back on the 1 to 8 steps. Now let's shorten the loop using the divide factor of a 1 quarter equivalent to 4 steps. Now the loop plays the 1 to 4 steps. The move function now will move the loop at the 4 steps length. Therefore, by turning the knob a little, it's the 5 to 9 steps that are looped. By placing move on 13, it's now the 13 to 16 steps that are looped. We are now having a loop which has a 2 steps duration and which by the move button can play and move 2 steps at a time. Let's get back on an 8 steps loop with the 1 half factor of the divide button and have the steps 1 to 8 play. As we understood with the option shift by one loop size of the move button, the loop moves here according to the length of the divide button. From step 1 to step 8, then since the loop lasts 16 steps from step 9 to 16. Now let's activate the shift by one step option and note that the loop shifts step to step from steps 1 to 8, then from steps 2 to 9, from steps 3 to 10, from steps 4 to 11, 5 to 12, etc. As we notice, we can have rather large and rather short loops via the divide button, and we can move these loops in the pattern in two ways, via the move button. Note that we can use the loop function here together with the filter and or slicer and roller. Doing so, the loop can remain active when we pass from one pattern to another.